Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. This is a slight update to a video I made about two years ago when I had only half as many subscribers, and now that I'm going to start looking into the astronomical beliefs of the ancient Egyptians, I thought it would be a good idea to have another look at the famous Dendera Zodiac. I have been reading a lot more on the subject and have a number of videos in the pipeline, but I believe it is a good idea to have another look at the Dendera Zodiac as a starting point, before looking at the sky maps of the Tomb of Senenmut of the 18th Dynasty, and then looking further back into the Old Kingdom and pre-dynastic times. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the famous Dendera Zodiac, and how, in actual fact, it may well be a Babylonian copy. Some of you will have seen this video from two years ago, but I think we should refresh our memories before we go any deeper. Found on the ceiling in the Temple of Hathor, which is part of the famous Dendera Temple complex, south of Abydos in Upper Egypt, was once one of the most famous base reliefs in ancient Egypt, the Dendera Zodiac. It is notable for its depiction of the constellations, which include the different signs of the Zodiac. Most are easily recognised by modern day observers, as they appear almost the same as their modern day equivalents, but nevertheless, there are also several signs that are less easily identified, as they are represented in accordance to ancient Egyptian iconography, or so we are told. There is in fact evidence to say that far from having a truly ancient Egyptian origin, it is in fact copied from a Babylonian source. The Zodiac was discovered in 1799, after Napoleon's military campaign in Egypt, where Vivant Denon, an artist who would soon become the first director of the Louvre Museum, stumbled upon it. He was amazed to find that it is a truly magnificent map of the stars on a plane projection. The map is somewhat unique, being circular in shape as opposed to the more usual rectangular Egyptian depictions. The heavens are portrayed as a disc, held up by four pillars of the sky, in the form of four female figures, possibly depictions of Hathor, that are assisted by eight falcon-headed figures. There are 24 hands touching the disc, which some say indicates the 24 hours of the day. In the circumference of the disc are 36 spirits or deacons. These are said to be the first magnitude stars used to keep track of the days of the year. These deacons, each representing 10 days, were carved onto the Dendera zodiac to symbolise the 360 days of the calendar year. The circle of 36 deacons enclose a group of constellations, including the signs of the zodiac shown here in green, many of which you are familiar with, including a lion, scorpion, ram and a pair of scales, obviously representing Leo, Scorpio, Aries and Libra respectively. Interestingly, and also unsurprisingly, Aquarius is depicted as the Nile Egyptian water god Happy, the god who controlled the flooding of the Nile, pouring water from two vases. Today the Dendera Zodiac is in the Louvre Museum in France, and since its arrival in 1822 it has sparked interest from the French intellectual elite. One question that is still debated to this day is when the Zodiac was created. Some believe it was created towards the end of dynastic Egyptian history, whilst others believe it is thousands of years earlier, but due to the style of iconography, this is certainly impossible. Jean-Francois Campollion, famous for deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphs, a godfather of the subject you could say, did find the answer. In one of the cartouches of the zodiac, the Greek word autocrata is written in hieroglyphs, which led him to believe that the Dendera zodiac was made during the Greco-Roman period. But was the zodiac representing the sky at this time? Physicists Joseph Fourier and Jean-Baptiste Biot, along with astronomer Johann Karl Burckhardt, spearheaded the investigation into the Dendera zodiac. They wondered if the constellations depicting the zodiac were actual astronomical calculations, depicting the movements of the stars, or merely symbolic representations. Their studies led to the birth of what we now call archaeoastronomy. For the ancients, each zodiac sign corresponded with the season of the year. Cancer was symbolic of summer, and the scales of Libra signify the autumnal equinox. But, on the Dendera zodiac, the placement of these constellations is highly skewed and distorted. In fact, it is far from being a quality and accurate representation of the night sky. 
We are told by many that this zodiac contains thousands of years worth of Egyptian advanced astronomy. Yet the Dendera zodiac is actually quite a bit of a mess, and I don't think it is intentional. Some researchers say that this bizarre skewing is because the creators were purposefully making the constellations a spiral, with the heavens emanating out of the constellation Cancer. They say this signifies that the start of the current era of history began with Cancer, and therefore the zodiac is based on truly ancient knowledge, from around 7500 to 8000 BC. I don't doubt that this zodiac is filled with vast amounts of knowledge and understanding, but I disagree with these ideas. For a start, it isn't a true spiral. There is nothing resembling anything like a Fibonacci spiral, as the 12 main astrological constellations form a kind of squashed circle. Furthermore, the constellation of Cancer isn't even in the center of the star map. Cancer is out of place, but it isn't the main focal point. It clearly isn't central to this specific representation. We know that the ancient Egyptians clearly placed a great deal of importance on astronomy and the movement of the heavens, and there are many other fantastic astrological depictions at Dendera, and other sites throughout the ancient Egyptian world. There are also finds like this pre-dynastic dish dating to around 3500 BC, that have clear astrological connotations. I actually think that the Dendera Zodiac simply contains a number of errors. It is certainly a thing of beauty, a true work of art, and I do believe that it points to a specific time in history. Certainly not as old as many think, but certainly a date older than the construction of the temple it is inside. Archaeo astronomers have noted without doubt that the Dendera Zodiac displays the ecliptic with its summer solstice at the Cancer Gemini boundary a position it would have had in 650 BC. The summer solstice is designated by the transect that just grazes the Cancer constellation on its western side, facing Gemini. So, the Dendera zodiac isn't thousands of years old as many believe. It was created during the Greco-Roman age, and the style of art certainly reflects these latter stages of ancient Egyptian history, hugely different to that of pre- and old dynastic times. But the odd thing is that the Zodiac was depicting a specific time of 650 BC. But why? Well, the reason is because this unique circular sky map really isn't as unique as we'd hope it to be, and the iconography, although Egyptianized, certainly isn't native to Egypt. The evidence suggests that in actual fact it is a copy, based on the work of another culture, and this is also why I believe there are errors. It is clear that those that designed the Dendera Zodiac had direct knowledge of the Babylonian forms of the Zodiac, as configurations such as the field, the frond of Arua, and the cargo boat, as well as the wolf and the plough in the centre, are clearly Babylonian in origin. The Dendera Zodiac is skewed and distorted because, in my opinion, it has been copied inaccurately from an older Babylonian source and then Egyptianized with a handful of Egyptian star figures added in, or substituted for their Babylonian counterparts. And this really isn't a bold claim when you study it in more detail, just as researcher and author Gavin White has done. Apart from the Egyptian headdress, the depiction of Sagittarius is almost identical to its Babylonian prototype, even down to the two heads and the two tails. Furthermore, below his front feet is a small figure of a boat, quite clearly a Babylonian cargo boat, which is said to be located beneath the figure of Pabisag, the Babylonian name for our Sagittarius. Behind Leo the Lion we see Virgo, and its size and orientation is much closer to its Babylonian prototype than its Greek counterpart. Interestingly, the second goddess stationed on the tail of Leo is very likely to be an image of the Babylonian constellation called the Frond of Arua, which is said to stand at the tail of the lion. The square enclosure between the Piscean fish is a clear depiction of the field constellation that is known to correspond to the square of Pegasus, another Babylonian legacy. Looking back at Orion on the zodiac, which has been Egyptianized to Sar, a crested bird is walking behind him. The Babylonian version of Orion is called the True Shepherd of Anu, and although no depictions are known, texts say that his symbol of office was a staff, and on entitlement stones he was frequently represented by the figure of a crested walking bird, sometimes a rooster. 
Here we see the Sothis cow, which experts agree represents Sirius on the Dendera zodiac. She is flanked by a female archer and a perching hawk. On the Babylonian star map, the stars of Canis Major, which includes Sirius, are referred to as the bow and arrow. And this figure of the female archer is clearly modelled on the Babylonian warrior goddess Inanna. This figure looks almost lion-like, with its front feet resting on the abyss symbol. Judging by the surrounding constellations, it is very likely to be located in the region of Centaurus. In Babylonian tradition, this region of the sky is occupied by a wild boar, and author Gavin White believes that the protruding tongue of the Dendera beast is actually a misunderstanding of the boar's tusk, and its mane is a misrepresentation of the boar's spinal brush. This duo is the well-known Babylonian constellations known as the She-Goat and the Sitting Dog, whilst in the centre of the zodiac we see a wolf sitting on a plough. And this is quite obviously the Babylonian constellation known as the Wolf and the Plough, which represented the constellation of Draco. In Babylonian astrology, the wolf gnaws at the harness that suspends the plough to the centre of heaven. Legend says that when the wolf finally tears the rope asunder, the different levels of the cosmos that the rope unites will collapse, bringing about the end of a world era. Finally, this pair of figures set below Ares are likely representations of the lion-headed Babylonian constellations known as Lulal and Latarak. You can read more about Gavin White's truly incredible investigative work in far more detail in his book Babylonian Star Lore, an illustrated guide to the star lore and constellations of ancient Babylonia. It is clear that Babylonian astrology influenced the Dendera zodiac, and far from being an original Egyptian astrological map of the stars, it is in fact quite an inaccurate and Egyptianized version of the Babylonian star map, created in the Greco-Roman period of Egyptian history. The original Babylonian figures have been misunderstood, misplaced and distorted in this map, so much so that the constellations are actually quite difficult to identify, as they are out of position. Here is Gavin White's corrected version of the Dendera Zodiac, and one that certainly makes more sense. This is probably how the final product should have looked. And now compare this to the Babylonian star map. The similarities are striking and unquestionable. I strongly believe that there is nothing cryptic about this zodiac, no hidden message that points to some truly ancient event that centres on the constellation of Cancer. It was created during the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt, and the artist based their masterpiece on the exquisite work from Babylon, which had also been under Greek rule until some time after Alexander the Great's death. The exchange of ideas, of knowledge and of learning, would have been commonplace through the Hellenistic period from country to country. The Dendera Zodiac is a beautiful piece of art. Nobody can deny that, and I can't deny that it is packed full of information. But it also shows just how the Ptolemaic dynasty Egyptianized Babylonian beliefs, in a similar way to how the Romans Christianized pagan beliefs. But I don't believe that this zodiac is a fantastic insight into ancient Egyptian astronomy, but a badly copied version of a Babylonian star map, but one that is certainly of great importance historically. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.